in votu. In votu, time is commonly supposed to run backward. It is insisted, however vaguely, that everywhere else, what exists is understood to protrude from the past into the present. In votu, what exists is understood to protrude from the future into the present. Time pours out in a stream whose current goes toward the past, although their preferred metaphor for this is a burning incense stick. The past is ashes, still retaining the shape of the stick for a time, then dispersing to dust, while the future is unground leaves, and the present is the ring of fire. Votu is reached by crossing a high step plateau of long green grass. Like a glacier, the city flows from an inaccessible source, high in the mountains, and extends down onto the plain. A boundary separates the Piedmont zone from the upper city, and, to the best of anyone's knowledge, nobody lives above the boundary. Looking up, the people of Votu watch as the future city arrives, having already existed from time immemorial, and thus being older than the city they've come to know, sliding inexorably down the slope and piling up on top of them. People move into the new buildings and adapt to the new streets as they cross the boundary into the habitable zone, while the older structures opposite are driven down and crushed together, collapsing to form a sort of rubbery scrim at the city's lowest extremity. The compacted past city forms a dense integument, not unlike a callus, that makes the erection of an outer wall unnecessary along that side. Those who, crossing the boundary, ascend into the future city, find empty, still, expectant streets and houses over which huge sculpted heads preside. These are expertly carved in stone, with such subtle command of expression that there can be no mistake the faces are meant to be seen as sleeping, not dead. They are all different. Some faces are composed, others sprawl. The air there is tense, and the buildings are much overgrown, but there is very little animal life. The populated area of Votu echoes with bird song from end to end, and the birds are always first into the new sections, but they don't go far into the future. People don't venture over the boundary into the future area because it, like the rest of the higher mountains, belongs to what the natives call forgetting country. Forgetting country is under a natural spell that makes certain forms of remembering fatal. No one who goes there dies for having remembered how to tie a shoelace. That kind of memory is as harmless there as anywhere. Likewise, familiarity, as someone eats breakfast, as someone catches a glimpse of the view from bed, that variety of memory does not trigger the spell. But memories of events, parents, names, specifics, can't be safely brought to mind beyond the boundary. Every recollection of such things contributes to a morbid condition resembling chronic arsenic poisoning. Unfortunately, the killing influence also comes into play whenever one remembers that it is unsafe to remember things, building up in the softening brain of the victim until paralysis, coma, and melting. Remembering others who have died in this way is the most toxic of all forms of memory, Anyone who remembers a victim is virtually certain to become a victim himself. The boundary is part of a prophylactic scheme laboriously put together over many years by specialists, forgotten and written down. There are no barriers, just signs that are visible only from the lower side so as not to remind anyone who dares venture above the boundary. The cordon is lined with lodges occupied by municipal hypnotists who are sworn to entrance and dememorize all who seek to pass beyond.